Welcome to Behold the Real Jesus broadcast brought to you by the Jesus Christ International Church, 325 South High Street, right here in Longview, Texas, zip code 75601, right across from Kilgore College at Longview. We've been talking about the work of God. To be included in the work, to be found and worthy of the kingdom of God for which we also suffer, we have to have, first of all, the revelation of Jesus Christ and who he is. Obviously, we cannot grow up into him in all things in the faith that was once delivered to the saints unless we know him in his person. Then we can know him in his work. As we have been talking, and if you have been tuning in, you know that Christ, first and foremost, is the Spirit of God. Who, to come under his own law, made a body of flesh and blood, which this is the revealing of the Spirit of God, the revealing of the Father of glory, the express image of his person, the image of the invisible God. So therefore, to have the doctrine of Christ in his person, knowing who he is, the true Spirit of God, is 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, the Spirit of God, the Father. He is the Father of glory, the Word, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God in every function and office. Who made himself a body of flesh and blood when he made himself of no reputation and took on him the form of a servant made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, humbled himself to the death, the death of the cross, where God was in Christ, working salvation in and of himself alone in his own body of flesh and blood. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. There, if we understand that, and that doctrine of Christ, then the next step there is uh, to see his glory. You see, who he did foreknow, then we also did predestinate, be conformed to the image of his Son. To be conformed to the image of his Son is to beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. Why? That we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for us is. Why will anyone not make heaven, even though God did not make hell for any man to go there, but we will go there as a transgressor if we do not accept the work of God and the cross uh, shed blood of Jesus Christ. Simply the devil and his angels uh, were made a place God prepared hell for the devils and his angels, not for any mankind. God not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Therefore, the work of God in knowing him, then we grow up into him in all things, and we are contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. The faith of God is the testimony of Jesus. The testimony is the testimony of Jesus Christ, not the testimony of the church. Not the testimony of Israel, but the testimony of Jesus. You see, it's not us, but it's Christ through us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He said, I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In that revelation of Jesus... We're growing up into him in all things. For God gave gifts unto men, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the work of the ministry. As we're talking about the work of the ministry, the work of the ministry is the Jesus ministry. In Daniel 9, 27, it said, he will confirm the covenant with many for one week. The covenant is, the holy covenant is Jesus. For I've given him for a covenant to the people. He will be, Daniel 9, 24 through 27, Jesus will be cut off in the midst of the week, but not for himself. And who shall declare his generation? In other words, uh, there is another three and one half years and 42 months, time, times and a half, three and a half years or 1,203 score days of the Jesus ministry to fulfill the work 
of the ministry. The work of the ministry is a Jesus ministry in this gospel being preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end will come. Whosoever overcometh to the end, the same shall be saved. In Revelation 3.21, Jesus said, He that overcometh to the end. Overcomes what? Overcomes the devil, the world, and his own flesh. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame, and I am set down with my Father in his throne. God became a man, went back to God. Therefore, he proceeded from God, went back to the Father. And there he made a place for us where Christ is set, seated at the right hand of God, set and seated where we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There are four and 20 seats in heaven. Those seats are in Christ Jesus in the four and 20 elders and the four beasts before the throne of God, the four living creatures. The work of God in the last days is not for someone or a believer to say, well, I'm saved, sanctified, and on my way to heaven and sit on a pew and never do anything. We're called for the work. What work? For the work of the ministry. You see Laodicea. The Laodicean church says we're clothed, fed, and have need of nothing. They think they already had it. They would see no sorrow. Mr. Babylon, the great, the mother of hearts, abomination of the earth, says, I said a queen, and I am no widow, and I will see no sorrows. Sorrows is birth pains, the beginning of sorrows. Uh, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. What is the beginning of sorrows? Earthquakes in diverse places, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. Uh, sorrows are birth pains for the church that will bring forth Jesus. Uh, you see, there was a woman clothed in heaven with a sun and a moon at her feet, upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Uh, and she cried, travailing in birth, in pains, sorrows, birth pains. And she brought forth a man child, caught up to God and to his throne. The man child is not Jesus 2,000 years ago, but Jesus in you. How do we know that? Because Revelation 12 says uh, the old dragon, the serpent, the scorpion, the dragon, the devil went to make war with the woman and the remnant of her seed. The remnant of her seed. Who is that? Those that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. If we keep his commandments, then we love God because we keep his commandments. Uh, that is not a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. Uh, that's the love of God. But the faith that was once delivered to the saints, uh, that is the testimony of Jesus. Uh, and that is the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19.10. What are we saying? Neighbor, we're saying that there's a work of God, that he's preparing his body. The true wheat, not the chaff, but the true wheat in the last days uh, for his glory to his light and his glory will shine upon the church when he's glorified in his saints. Many say that nothing will happen until the day of the Lord, that there will be no work of God, that there will be nothing except the coming of the Lord Jesus and sit back and wait and abide until his coming. You see, we just uh, saved, sanctified, sit in a church pew and do nothing and not strive to enter in the straight gate, not pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, just going to church as a kind of a fellowship, uh, have a social gathering with the saints of God, uh, not performing uh, and pushing toward and pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What are we called for? Well, there's a glory to usward who believe which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Why did he set? Christ is set where we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ. What work did he wrought in Christ to us when he set him at his own right hand? Because we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, growing up into him in all things. What are these things? These things are the things of faith. It's a, it is a progressive glorification, a 
step by step growing from a child to a young man, uh, to the young men to a full grown man. These steps are progressive glorification. For the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But we all with open face beholding in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. It's Christ, it is the Holy Ghost, working in and through the believer that is growing up into Christ and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and to a perfect man that we may be presented blameless at the coming of our Lord, both spirit, soul, and body. Why? Because God is coming back for a glorious church. Who is this God? Looking for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, he is the only true God in eternal life. There is not another. So we're going to go into this week as you tune in. We will talk about the work of God in the last days. His glory to be revealed in his saints before the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, the coming of Christ and our gathering together unto him. That day, that day of Christ, uh, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day will not come until it come of falling away first. And the man of sin be revealed. Well, what's the falling away? Well, 1 Timothy 4.1 states that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith. They had to be in the faith to depart from the faith. And some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having the conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and abstaining from meats which God has sanctified by the word of God in prayer. What are we saying? Stir up ourselves and the body of Christ for the great work that is set before us. Don't be as Laodicea, for God said, Woe be unto them that are at ease in Zion. He said, I'll search Jerusalem with candles and punish all them that are settled on their leaves. We must stay stirred up. We must occupy till he comes. We must be about the master's business. We must be pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What is this work that he wrought to usward? In Christ, what is this work that he mentioned in Ephesians 1? That in that day that uh, uh, he would confirm the covenant with many for one week. That he would uh, 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 lick the work of the ministry. The fivefold ministry has been for the work of the ministry, for the perfecting of the saints. Until we all come into the unity of the faith, into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Uh, growing up into him in all things. What's all things? Well, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What are these things? It's the faith, the faith that was once delivered to the saints, but we can only receive it as we walk in the light as he is in the light. For the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Now we have knowledge in part, we know in part. Everything we do, we do in part in Pentecost. But there's a time coming in tabernacles, in the next season of God, before the day of the Lord, before the coming of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. A great glorious work in the earth with this gospel being preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end will come. What is this work? Well, it's, be, it's coming into the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Jesus told the disciples before he was crucified that had walked with him for three and one half years. He said, I have many things to tell you, these things of faith, but you're not able to bear them now. But when the comfort of the Holy Ghost has come, he'll speak of me for all that's fathers given, given unto me and what he heals, he will declare unto you and show you things which will come to pass. You see, I hath not he seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him, but is revealed by the Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. The whole revelation of Jesus Christ is not a revelation of the Antichrist. 
It's not a revelation of anything of the world. It's not a revelation of any man. It is a revelation of God himself in the last book of the Word of God, the revelation of Jesus Christ uh, that God gave unto him to show unto his servants uh, things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it, gave us a sign, signified it to his servant John. This is Jesus. Uh, from Revelation 1 to Revelation 22 is the work of God. Uh, and we see seals, trumpets, and vials. Uh, as we go into the second chapter, we find the churches listed there. And he says, if any man have an ear to hear, let him hear. So it's to each one of us individually. To him that hath an ear, let him hear a spiritual understanding spiritual revelation and understanding of what God is saying to the church is. If any man have an ear to hear, let him hear. That's individually. What the Spirit is saying to the churches, that is the church as a whole. Therefore, every member in the body of Christ uh, will come into the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God uh, there in one mind and one accord, just as it was in the day of Pentecost. Uh, in the day of Pentecost, they were in one mind and one accord. Uh, why? Because it was not one second late, not one second early, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. That was a season of God on God's calendar. And whenever that clock ticked in God's calendar for Shabbat, Pentecost, uh, there, there came a rushing mighty wind from heaven. Cloven tongues of fire appeared and sat on each one of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, that happened over 2,000 years ago. A thousand years is as a day with the Lord. So it's been two days on God's calendar since we have received the Holy Ghost corporately as the body of Christ. Well, whom he did for them, he also did predestinate. This church, the body of Christ, is predestinated. Not in the individual, but the church is predestinated. For what? To be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus. Uh, and those that he predestined, them he also called. And them that he called, them he also justified. And them that he justified, them he also glorified to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Yes, there's more than just sitting on a church pew. It is in the true body of Christ, a great stirring uh, in the spirit of the believer, our conscience bearing us witness in the Holy Ghost, that God is preparing a great body, a great move of God uh, to those that are hearing his voice now. To those that hear his voice, uh, uh, hearken to his voice and do not as in the days of provocation when they proved the Lord uh, and saw his works. Uh, can the Lord provide uh, uh, meat in the wilderness? Uh, can he provide a table in the wilderness? And God gave them quail until it ran out their nose and then he killed them. We can't provoke God. We can't tempt our Lord. We must obey him in the obedience to this word of God, preparing to meet our God. Jesus getting us ready for that great day, this day of the Lord. But before that coming, he said, Behold, I send you Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord come, before the day of the Lord God Almighty, before the day of Christ. Uh, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Who are the children? Where their newborn babes, as they desire the sincere milk of the word, that they may grow thereby. But then the babes grow up into children, and the children there, they are the young men, and then from the young man they grow up into full age. And the fathers, though you have many instructors in Christ and though you have many teachers, yet you have not many fathers. Uh, Paul said, I have begotten you in the gospel. He is the father there. Of, and that's a little, little F, a father begotten you in the gospel of Timothy, Titus, etc. We have the same thing today. God getting us ready, preparing us. Uh, as we're going up into him in all things, as we're acquiring and we're going into the faith that was once delivered to the saints. 
What is that faith? That is the revelation of Jesus Christ uh, to show unto his servants, that God gave unto him to show unto his servants things. What is faith? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What are these things? Are they natural things? Uh, are they money, mammon, cars, lands, houses? No, sir. It's not houses and lands and, and uh, uh, dominating in this world in man's arrogance. Uh, and then the things that are highly esteemed among men, which is abomination in the sight of God. It is the things of the eternal. You see, the things which are seen are temporary, temporal. But the things which are not seen, these are the eternal. That is, faith is the substance of things not seen. And that is what we're talking about in the spiritual realm. What are we called to do? We're called to grow up into him in all things uh, for the work of the ministry. We find that in Ephesians 11. What is the work of the ministry? Well, Jesus had a ministry for three and one half years, uh, 42 months, uh, time, times and a half in his ministry, born in tabernacles, that is, uh, in uh, the seventh month of Tishri, and he was crucified in Passover at exactly 33 and a half years old, and his ministry starting at age 30, of a three and one half year, 42 month, time, times and a half, 1,203 score day ministry of Jesus. But he was cut off in the midst of the week. The week is a heptad, seven years. There remains another three and a half year Jesus' ministry, and that's the work of the ministry, the ministry of Jesus at God. Uh, and we've been in for over two days. Uh, there are 2,000 years in a Pentecostal realm that we have been growing progressively, progressively being glorified into the image of Jesus Christ. Uh, you see that God has provided some better thing for us that they all the fathers, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, all these died in faith, having never received the promise that they without us should not be made perfect. God will have a people that will come unto perfection unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is the work of the ministry. You see, there is a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with a sun, uh, the moon and under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Uh, and she cried, travailing in pain, and brought forth a man-child caught up to God and to his throne. The first man-child is written in Revelation 12, but in the second one mentioned in Revelation 12, it says man and child is written in in italics because it was not in the original transcript. Why? Because we're coming to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ uh, unto a perfect man. This will be the ones that the devil will try everything he can to stop this birth. The woman is the church. The ones that keep the commandments of God and, and is the remnant of her seed will keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Uh, the testimony of Jesus is one of the highest glories that we as the body of Christ will enter into before the coming of the Lord. Uh, don't let anyone tell you that it's going to be at the coming of the Lord that you're going to receive these things. Don't let them tell you that there's not a work of God in the last days before he returns a second time without sin unto salvation. Why? Because you, the saints of the living God, will work the works of God in greater works than these shall you do for him to be glorified in his saints when this gospel of the kingdom will be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations. And this is to why the body of Christ, the true bride of Christ uh, right now is going through tribulation and persecution, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. Why? That you and I might be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which we also suffer. Don't let anybody tell you that this is a blessing plan. It's suffering that through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of God. Not only called to believe on Jesus, but also to suffer with him. Why? That we, we might be accounted worthy of the kingdom of God, 2 Thessalonians 2, chapter 1, that we might be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which we also suffer. 
Those which are suffering rest with us. When the Lord shall be revealed from heaven, you're going to have a great revelation of Jesus. Everyone that's suffering will have a direct consolation in the work of God, in the work of the ministry in the last days. Well, our time is gone. This is Brother Dennis Beard, uh, uh, along with the Jesus Christ International Church, saying, uh, Behold the real Jesus. Praise God. We counted a not on the privilege of coming to your homes and businesses. Uh, we did, it's not counted a little thing with us. We appreciate the time that you give to us in this gospel of Jesus Christ. We're committed to the true gospel and the real Jesus. Because of that, we want to make an offer to you this month on a, a book that I wrote many years ago called The Eras of the Trinity. That's right. You heard it right. The Eras of the Trinity, which no apostle, even the epistles, even remotely, said anything of a three-person Godhead. But where did it come from? Where was the origin? How did it come into being in mainline Christianity? We're going to go into the Council of Nicaea, 325 A.D., the Chalcedonian definition of 451. All in this book, it'll give uh, the details and the eras literally spelled out in the Word of God. I know it'll be a blessing to you. Along with that, we're going to make the DVD available, The Heirs of the Trinity, the same, on a DVD format, going into the same material and how Jesus is only one, and the Heirs of the Trinity spelled out in the Nicene Creed and the, and the Chalcedonian definition. For a gift of $20 or more. We want to make both the book, The Heirs of the Trinity, and uh, The Heirs of the Trinity DVD available to you. If you will write, just mention offer JCIC, offer number 50. That's right, JCIC, offer number 50. Post Office Box 2906, Longview, Texas, zip code 75606. Again, that's The Heirs of the Trinity, offer number JCIC, Number 50, you'll receive the book and the DVD for a gift of $20 or more. Write to us. We would love to hear from you. And there, mention the gift. It will keep the air broadcast on the air by your gifts and your offerings. We are so thankful for that. We're grateful to you. And until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold the real Jesus. Jesus.